Be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. 
be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. Be lifted. Be lifted higher. Jesus be lifted higher, higher, be lifted, be lifted. Jesus be lifted higher, be lifted higher. Be lifted higher, saints. Lift your hands to heaven. Close your eyes, saints. Jesus is going to do something for you. Jesus, be lifted higher. Jesus, be lifted higher. Come on, give me them drums, brother. Be lifted higher. Be lifted. Be lifted higher. Be lifted higher. Be lifted. Come on, drum.
a prayer language, I want you to pray in the spirit for 20 seconds. If you have a prayer language, pray in the spirit. If you don't pray in the spirit, just pray in the understanding. Come on, sis, let me hear you for 20 seconds. Just pray in the Spirit. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome. touch you. If you have sickness in your body, I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Your life and make you all 
sing tunes with.
you may be seated. Saints, we flow it tonight. We flow it tonight. You can just bring it over here. Remember, just bring it over here. Be lifted. Pray in the spirit for 10 seconds. Pray in the spirit. Manda vaso dele de tele me casa pa. Rondo mo sente tele me sia. Zondo lo mo correre de vente sia. Zoko randa banda la va cose de le vente. Corranda vasa de le vasa. Zolo monde le mande le mande le mande le mande Rosta pande le mase Be lifted high Be lifted Be lifted high I'm talking to you tonight. We just flowing tonight. The Holy Spirit has been speaking to me about so many things. I'm going to be talking to you about a lot of deep things today. There's something that God does. When is your time to move as his prophetess or his prophet? That's different from the normal born again experience. Everyone gets born again. But when God is about to deal with you prophetically, there's something else that takes place. There's something else that begins to happen. And saints, I've experienced this several times in my life and more so more recently. Now, I want to say this. When the Holy Spirit is about to speak to you, he'll decrease your appetite. It'll be weird. Your eating patterns and your sleeping patterns will be weird. It'll be unusual. Praise the Lord. You won't find yourself getting hungry uh, at the normal time that you get hungry. Now, you can still eat, but you'll feel a push against your eating. You can still uh, sleep, but you'll feel a push against your sleeping. Mm -hmm. And for God, when God places a prophetic seal on you, this will increase when God is telling you you can't avoid it no longer. Most of the times God will permit a season of warfare that season is causing you 
to have to submit to that call. If you don't have the warfare, you'll keep running. And a lot of people that have a prophetic grace are really Jonah's in disguise. They run from God a lot. Saints, do you know that some people say that they love God? True. But we have all been guilty of running from God. Love does not run from, love runs to. Not only does love runs to, but the Holy Spirit said, love runs through. So though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, nothing will stop you from getting to Jesus. Your appetite will change. There was, and, and let me just give you a scripture record. Something happened to Daniel prophetically. His spirit man was underneath divine surgery. He couldn't eat what the king was serving in the kingdom. There was something happening to him. Where the king said, every man is eating this meal. But for you, God put in his spirit, you can't eat what the other young men are eating. Mm -hmm. Now, watch this. God didn't tell him to fast. But he told him to fast for what they was eating. Mm -hmm. When God is really placing disgrace on your life strong, you'll find yourself saying to yourself, you can't eat what other people are eating. Whether it be things of the flesh, things that destroy you, things that weaken you, things that cause you to be tempted. The Bible told you to avoid things that cause you to be tempted. As a matter of fact, if something causes you to get distracted, it also causes you to be subtracted. You lose value with your oil, with your anointing, with your future, with things that distract you. So what God has taught me over the last couple of years of my life is to be in warfare, but don't let warfare be in me. There are things that will happen to you throughout your life that you can't control and some things you can control. But when you don't let it get inside of you, you accelerate your deliverance. Amen. God can bring you out sooner, faster, and he can bring you out not only empty-handed, but he can bring you out with everything that belongs to you in this life. Now, I want you to see this, saints. The Bible didn't say that God brought the children of Israel out. And listen, if you, if you just hear me tonight, if you just hear me tonight, I really heard Jesus told me today, he said, son, I just want you to speak on my behalf. That's all I want. He said, please. I said, Lord, you telling me please? He said, son, do you know why I said please? Because I hardly did. Wow. Now, saints, it's moments like that that break my heart. Saints, when I was in situations, I never felt bad for myself. I felt bad for Jesus. Because I knew that the stuff that was happening to me wasn't just happening to me, but it was happening to me because it was spiritual then. It was the, another spirit in a person attacking the Jesus in me. So I didn't feel bad for myself. It went throughout my life. I didn't feel bad for myself, but I started feeling bad for Jesus. Now, what the Bible said in Isaiah that he was acquainted with grief. So when Jesus was going through his scenario, he started feeling for the Father. When we go through our scenario, when we in a place of brokenness and true love, now, now watch this, saints. There's a, there's a righteous brokenness and there's a ratchet brokenness. 
The righteous brokenness is where you're humble before God. And that's all he wants. The Lord not really asking for a lot of stuff from us. As a matter of fact, he told us that his yoke is easy. Amen. And his burden is light. So he not really requiring heavy duty on us. But what he want righteous. He want uh he want uh, a, a person to come into a place where it's no longer about you and you can just let the anointing flow through you. Now, I, I want you to understand, for the anointing to flow through you, you're going to have to be awkward a lot of times in this life. Yeah. Watch this. You'll be awkward financially. Wow. Wow. Meaning stuff ain't adding up. Wow. <laughs> I've been in a situation where the repo man was coming to get my car. <laughs> Guess what? I was, I was running that back car. Listen, uh, listen here. Fine, B. Uh, repo man, no, what? Repo man, you're going to have to find me first. Listen, says, I'm going to go sleep in my car. you going to take me with this car. Huh? If you going to take me, I'm going to be up in there. Now, watch this say the repo man will take you with you in your car. So you got to stay away. <laughs> you got to keep that alarm clock on just in case. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that song? Just in case. Ah. Just, no, sorry, Just leave it alone. Ah. <laughs> so God will let you be awkward financially. Now watch this. I realized that God spoke to me in times of my um, where I wasn't really financially stable. I remember those times in my life where Jesus told me, he said, son, your lack is causing to shut the wrong doors because you need me. Wow. If you have money, you'll give it to the wrong person. Mm -hmm. If you have money, you'll invest in the wrong things. Mm -hmm. If you have money, whoever calls you, you'll give it to them. Mm -hmm. If you have money, you'll pursue opportunities not my will. God let the children of Israel come into lack until they submitted to the prophet. He didn't stop the situation. As a matter of fact, they was in slavery for years. And God said, you are the apple of my eye. But he still let them be in slavery. And what God will let you not have the things that you need or want in the current time because he knows that at the time you get it, there's a lot of inaccurate decisions you'll make with it. Mm -hmm. Now watch this sentence. Solomon gets money. He becomes rich. And he spends the money on harlots. Meaning there were strange women in his camp that didn't love his God. They didn't serve the Lord. And he gave them the money to build an altar on the mountain. Now God made him rich. But he used the riches for wrong purposes. Now saints, whenever God is about to promote you, he'll test you with what you already have. Move your heart. The instructions that God will give you will never be with something you don't have. No instruction will be from what you don't have. What he does is he tests you with what you do have. Amen. And, and, and if you're taking notes, you can write this down just so you remember. Divine stewardship. Divine stewardship. Stewardship is where God tests me, not with what I don't have, but what I do have. Now watch this. If you have nothing, you have time. True. A lot of people are not stewards of their time. Prophetically, you got to be a steward of your time, meaning you got to make that, that uh, push to spend time with the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have to. If you get lackadaisy with that, the demons will come wow. without you even inviting them. Mm. 
See, prayerlessness invites the demonic without your permission. It is written. If you don't pray, if you don't spend time with the Lord Jesus, if you don't seek his face, demons will come upon your life automatically. There's nothing you have to do. As a matter of fact, the prayerlessness is an invitation. So what God begins to do is when he's about to really use you in this realm of, of because saints, if you tell me what's right this now. Prayer is where God speaks to you. Fellowship is where God speaks to you. Well, prophecy is where God speaks to you. And favor is where God speaks for you. Amen. When you deal with, uh, as a matter of fact, I don't want to pit prayer. Pit fellowship. Fellowship is where God speaks to you. Prophecy is where God speaks to you. And favor is where God speaks for you. You have to master these two realms. And when we master these two realms of God, now watch this. The first realm is God speaking to you. See, nobody will ever be authorized to prophesy through the Holy Ghost until he can speak to you. If you take those writings down, power, no, no, process is where God uh, produces character in you. But power is where God uses you to produce character in others. You said say that one more time. Girl, you feeling frisky over there? When you deal with process, is God speaking to you? No, 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 I'm, I'm getting twisted. Process is where God is producing character in you. When we deal with power, is God using you to produce character in others? See, this is powerful though. Because your personal process is the awkwardness. You got to be awkward in the spirit. God ain't going to always tell you to do stuff that's going to make sense to you or seem good to you or will land you outside of the hot seat. You know God will tell you something that will cause you to be persecuted. He'll tell you to do something that will cause people to get angry at you. Some women obeying God, they're man mad at them. Some men obeying God and women mad at them. Saints, when I was in school, they used to write me that letter. Do you want to be with me? And then the letter, yes or no. <laughs> now, watch, Saints. It's not that I couldn't write the letter, but I got, I got into a place because my mother told me, she said, son, don't be playing around with them little guys. <laughs> Because I used to go to school smelling good. <laughs> I had my little moisture in my hair. Chilling in the scene with the gangster lead. Whoop. And 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 my mother used to, she used to really make sure that we were dressed real nice. Now, I want you to see this. When I surrendered completely to Jesus, he stripped me. And I didn't, there came a time where I didn't have not one. I remember one time there was a man in Atlanta, Georgia. His name was Dexter Satterwhite. Satterwhite. And, and saints, one day the Lord spoke to me in a dream and told me, he said, son, give all your stuff away to this man. I said, Jesus, you're not right. Uh-huh. Yeah. You, you're tripping right now, Lord. Let me fast about this thing. <laughs> now say it. When you fast, when you done heard God, 
Your season don't go fast. You heard what I said? Who heard what I said? Look at that man put his hand up. <laughs> now, watch this. I, I, I did what the Lord told me to do. And saints, do you know the Lord told me, he said, son, you going to keep the garment that you got? You're going to keep one last garment? And you're going to wash this garment until I give you new clothes. Now, saints, when I did it, I was in supernatural joy. Why? Because I knew I was fulfilling scriptures finally. Now, watch this. I want some of y'all to understand. The level of your requirements is equal to the level of your future. If you take a note, write that down. And the level of your instructions are in alignment with the level of your anointing. If you're going to have a small anointing, God will give you small instructions. If you're going to have a big anointing, you go, God going to give you big instructions. Now watch. I, let me just say this. Man of God, you said that you spent over thousands of dollars just to come here. Now watch this thing. He spends thousands of dollars to get to this meeting. What he does is he thinks that his money should be invested in his spirit. Oh, no, no, say, I, I didn't mean to call him out, but the Lord was just speaking to me up here because Jesus looked at the woman with the widow's might. And then he started talking about her. And then the woman that was worshiping Jesus with the alabaster box, then Jesus said, this woman going to be honored for the rest of the gospel. I'm up here talking about the woman. Every preacher up here talking about the woman. Listen, everybody talking about the woman with the alabaster box. And I made a song, C.C. Wine, and I made a song about the alabaster box. Look at the power of the Holy Ghost. You see that, Daniel? You see Daniel Tulsa? And what happened was he invested in his spirit. And saints, that's what I did. Now saints, watch this. I gave, I gave all my clothes away. And God told me, he said, son, you keep one change of clothing. You wash yourself. You wash, and wash the clothing until I deliver you. So watch this. The Lord speaks to me and tells me, he said, I want you to walk to purpose. Now, this is August the 8th that God speaks to me as the Lord lives. August the 8th. When he speaks to me on August the 8th, I obey him. I get to purpose. Why I'm at Publix, a lady comes up to me and she says, hey, how you doing? I said, I'm doing fine. Had my little smile going on, you know what I'm saying? Bring that smile. So far, I'm just leaving it on. So you're going to get your smile too. But, so I smile. The lady tells me, she says, oh, are you walking home? I said, yes, ma'am, I'm walking home. So I'm going on about my business. So I, I'm walking. I hear beep, beep, and toot, toot. I thought it was okay. <laughs> beep, beep, and toot, toot. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I look back, and there's a truck. So I look inside the truck. It's the lady. Now, but watch this. As the Lord lives, when I was staying in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, when I would walk one time, 
Now this is a true story. As the Holy Spirit is upon my life, a man pulled over. And the man, he happened to be a homosexual man. <laughs> now watch this say, This man tells me, he said, he said, oh, you look mighty fine today. <laughs> <laughs> now I didn't understand the population of, a, uh, of Atlanta was so dominantly covered by this principality. And I was just praying and walking. I wasn't thinking about nothing. I was just in a place of praying and walking. And when I turned around to him, I said, thank you. I just kept on walking. But I knew he was a faggot. I mean, let me not say it like that. I knew it was a homosexual. But y'all get offended. I mean, a and so I told him, and he said, he said, he said, would you like a ride? I said, brother, oh, I got a ride over here, but you can just can't see it yet, but they, they over there, they waiting, they coming. <laughs> Jesus. And so, when this lady pulled up behind me, I didn't know what was going on, but that's, that happens a lot in Atlanta, mm -hmm. or in certain regions in the world. So, long story short, she pulls up, she gives me a ride home. Now, while we're riding and abiding, she tells me, she says, I feel a voice telling me to help you. Now, watch this sentence. As the Lord lives, this woman was not saved because she told me that she served Hindu gods. And they got like a whole bunch of, they got about 365 gods, like a whole year of gods. They worship your foot, your toenails, your skin, your bathroom, your drawers. I don't know what they do. They worship everything they can see. Since we went to India and them men was up there kissing our feet. I said, brother, don't kiss my feet like that. Don't do that yet. <laughs> you don't get me in trouble with God. Don't do that. They kiss your feet. Now, when we was riding through India, all they did was run after our car. Now, watch. I was shocked that Indian men wasn't scared they were going to get run over. <laughs> no, I'm serious. The, 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 the Indian men. Now, watch. I had a small little Indian man driver, and the man was breaking all the rules. And I said, hold on, brother. You got me in here, though. I know you. we, we trying to get to the meter. And, and listen. Uh, the prophet Passion, he was in front of me and his car was going like this. I call, I, I was trying to call him on the phone. I'm like, listen, Passion, you all right? Because <laughs> I'm passionate about you now. Because <laughs> our drivers, and, and, and watch, in India, they break all the rules. You know red light? It mean go. <laughs> A green light mean Go faster than when you was going. <laughs> and a yellow light means I can't stop. <laughs> no, I'm just telling you, so if you go to India, if you get hit, just know I told you. And so the, the man, he, he was driving all crazy, and I had to tell him, I said, hold on, brother. You just almost hit me just then. I, my shoulder lean just almost got, I got a shoulder cup right there. And so my driver would just keep on going and going. And watch, saints, what, what was so shocking to me, he was a real short man. So I thought that his legs couldn't move that quick, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, brother, you, no, no, because he, he was up there like he was shifting from stop to go. I was like, how oh, you did that so quick, though? Because you got to step down and get there a bit. So long story short, we got to the meeting, but... When we got outside of the meeting, everybody ambushed the car. And they started knocking on the window. And the people, now this is what the Indian people was crying out. They said, please bless me. Jesus, please bless me. Now, so it was time sensitive. We had to go. 
and it was such a rush. And I was with uh, Prophet Hope, the young man that's that's uh, 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 doing an awesome ministry with Prophet Passion. Uh, and I got out the car, just started laying hands on people. And saints, the people were so hungry. The power of God was just touching that saints. This was after the service. Nobody was up there. It wasn't nothing to be seen. It was just behind the scenes. And Jesus began to minister to me. And he said, son, it's hunger that qualifies. It's hunger. It's hunger that qualifies. All they did, they didn't know God, but they wanted to get to know him. And whatever they saw could possibly represent him, they ran after him. Amen. Your name is Michelle? What's her name? What's her name? Michelle. Michelle? You know, you know, Michelle, Jesus telling me to tell you that you have a huge, huge destiny. And, and the Holy Spirit said the things that you suffer and the things that happen to you all through your youth. He said that he let you go through those things because this is your time where you're gonna walk in a special place with him. Jesus said there's so much blessings gonna come to you and you're wearing a strong prophetic anointing. And he said, because you came here, when you go back to the place, the residence is in New York, when you, when you go back to New York, I'm coming to New York, you know that, right? Whoop, there it was. Woo. Don't start now, that won't be there. God said, when you go back to New York, he said, you go back to your new life. Wow. Wow. Hey, 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 hey. See, while I was up here, Michelle, your name, kept coming to me and Jesus said that to tell my daughter that she pleased my heart. to the vehicle with the lady. She told me, I hear a voice telling me that I should, I'm supposed to help you. So I went with the lady, I was still a little immature in my flow with God. I went to say, yeah, lady, that's Jesus. She said, who? And saints, as the Lord lives, Jesus said, son, don't say nothing. I said, oh, she said, Jesus, I said, no, I, no, I didn't mean to say that. I was just talking about, I got to meet somebody later on today. And saints, do you know that lady? She said, where are you going to be? I said, I'll stay right here. She said, I believe that you and your mother should come and stay with me for Christmas. So, when I went to speak to my mother, my mother came and told me, she said, son, I already, I already saw the vision. She said, we go and go stay at this and this. I said, mother, man, you know, why you not know everything? I'm trying to tell you, son, you to let me bring some news to you, huh? So my mother was prepared, so we did it. We went, we went on, um, we went on Christmas Day. Now watch. I get to this lady house. They serve all these different gods. Her atmosphere is, 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 is packed with people. Then they were doing everything. With candles, sniffing candles, listen. I thought one of the candles was moving. I'm like, listen, if I'm moving right there. 
Now watch this saying. As the Lord lives, this house carried so much supernatural encounters. Most of it was demonic, but some of it was angelic. Now watch this saying. This is going to shock some of you. As, I'm, as we were in the house, I come to find out about this lady. Her husband Her and her husband was in great warfare. And he had moved out temporarily. Now, I didn't know this. When my mother and me discussed about going there, my mother told me. She said, I see a, a, a skinny, skinny man walking up a bunch of stairs. Now, when I didn't know that, the lady had a bunch of stairs. When we got to the house, I saw a bunch of stairs. I said, mm, mm. Right, right. But it wasn't no man in the place. Listen, if somebody prophesied to you, sometimes it's not going to really seem like it is so. That's how you know it's prophecy. Because when my mother said that about the about the stairs and the man walking up the stairs, she wasn't living with a man. So we move into the place. And when we moved into the place for Christmas, she tells us, I want you all to stay longer. So of course we asked the Lord and the Lord said, stay, this is your assignment. Now, I didn't know the things that was going to take place in the shook of my life in that place. One day I had a dream and I saw a haunted house. And I saw like one of those things that they show on Halloween and it, 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 it shook me up and I was like, what does that mean? And God said, that's the house you in. I'm like, well, Jesus, why you let me up in here? Get a move Another assignment, please. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. So when, 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 when all this stuff started happening, it was coping steady. Now, on the third day, here comes the man. And he knocks the door. And me and my mother was in a room. And my mother said to me, this is it. I'm like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> This man done gave himself, himself over to Satan. He been, he been inaugurated into the satanic kingdom through his mother. I say so much people do so much wickedness. She gave her son over to the demonic and he carried that same realm of the demonic into his life. So he comes that day and him and his wife, which, is, which was her, they reconcile. When I begin to leave the room, I see, I see the man. He says, hi, hello to me. He's real skinny. And my spirit quickened and the Lord said, that's the man. He moves back into the house. And the Lord speaks to me that night and said, this is your son. The man comes right before the new year and he he says to his wife and they spoke together in secret she comes into the room and she says i want to talk to you all about something she said me and my husband just spoke and he said to me He's supposed to take you to the mall to buy some clothes. Now watch this sentence. This man was given over to the satanic kingdom. He's deep into witchcraft. So saints, here I am. I only have the garment that I have. I gave all my clothes to Dexter at the command of the Lord. 
He said, only keep these clothes until I deliver you. I meet a lady on August the 8th, 8-8, eight, eight, New Beginnings. When I get to the, the meeting the lady, she connects with me. Though she connected with Hindu God, she says she hears a voice telling her she must help. She asks us to stay with her for Christmas. Her husband comes. Then he comes to have a conversation with her and tells her, I'm supposed to help the young man get some clothes. Now watch this, saints. The man took me to the mall. And saints, if you don't know, that's my favorite spot. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I begin to think. And saints, I don't go to the mall to shop. As the Lord lives, I don't, I don't go to the mall to shop. But I go to the mall because it really, sometimes there's different locations and spirit. I can talk to you about it where you can hear God stronger. Frequency. Saints, Wi-Fi is, a, is, is supernatural. Spiritually, the reason why God let us see Wi-Fi is because there's a Wi-Fi in the spirit. Your signal can get weak, low, disrupted. There's Wi-Fi in your prayer life. That's why some people don't hear God when they pray. The Wi-Fi is bad. The signal is bad. They need a stronger connection. So God will connect you to a man of God. He'll connect you to a woman of God. For stronger connection purposes. So saints, long story short, the God, he takes me to the mall and he buys me all these clothes from American Eagle. American Eagle, that's all he bought. And no other clothes, just American Eagle clothes. As the Lord lives, only American Eagle clothes. I didn't know it was prophetic for my future. Amen. 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 Yeah. I had no idea it was prophetic for my future. I had a visitation from the Lord Jesus, and he spoke to me and told me, he said, son, you are my eagle prophet. Now, I never understood what an eagle mean or what that phrase mean. And the Lord Jesus said to me, he said, son, there are people that I use to play angels in this life. And he said, there are people that are playing demons in this life. If you read the word, the Bible say that there are vessels for dishonor. And there are vessels for honor. There are some people playing angels in your life. There are some people playing demons in your life. There are some people that have been sent by the satanic kingdom. You're not going to ever see them until you get serious about God. Nor will you detect them until you surrender your life. Nor will you discern them until you die to yourself. There are people that have been set to cause you to fly in the spirit realm for, for God's sake. Now demons have shifts that they run. There are demons that are assigned to your prayer life to stop you from ever receiving answers from God Miracles from God. Uh, open doors from God. God never meant for you to have a breakthrough. Breakthroughs are not from God. Breakthroughs are for thieves. That's why they break through. God told us in the word of Revelation, I'll give you a door that no man can shut. I'll open a door. God never told you he was going to give you a breakthrough. He said, I'm going to open a door that no man can shut. See, once you open up a door, you don't need no breakthrough. I already broke through. I'm already up in there. The devil created the idea of breakthrough so that children of God will always be need-minded. I just need you to pay my bills, Lord. Wow. Listen, saints, God don't need no help paying nobody bills. Jesus paid Peter bills. There it is, the cross. Can you pay my bills? Pay my bills. <laughs> you are destiny's child. Yeah. 
I'm just saying, though. You're Destiny's child. You belong to God. He want to open up doors to you, but it requires obedience. See, it took my one step. Of, Jesus told me in a dream, give everything I had away. Now, what if I would have said, no, Lord, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. No, I ain't doing that. Yeah, he could have he still loved me, but I wouldn't have received that lady. Amen. Nor the divine connection. Yeah. But it was just one step of obedience. Saints, if you want to hear from God, here's a secret. Ask him what to do next. Oh, my. You know that's simple. That ain't nothing deep to what I just said, but it's really deep. Because God will single you out as a woman of God if you do that. God will single you out as a man of God if you do that. If you ask him what to do next, God will give you a text if you take it much further than that. If you ask God what to do next, he'll give you a text. He'll text message you. And so, saints, what the Lord began to do was, while we was inside of that house, the man, after he bought me the clothing, I started seeing different manifestations that were very weird. Mm -hmm. One day, we was inside the room, and I heard footsteps running. Mm -hmm. And it was nighttime. This is where God began to teach me about the demonic. Now, watch this, saints. God is an illustrative teacher. He does not like to teach you with just word alone. And, and Oh, my God. Let me just tell you this. If God ever tell you something in your spirit, he's going to manifest it in your personal life. You're going to start seeing the evidence of the thing happening. And, and watch. The characters are not invisible. They will be visible. You'll see visible, visibility. <laughs> You'll see visibility. Yes, yes. Come in here. I need all of you. Koji, you can come? Come on, brother. I, I, come on, come on the stage. Let me show you something. Wait, I don't need nothing. Now watch this. In the nighttime, I would be I, I, I would be in prayer. But the atmosphere was still damp with the demonic in the house I was in. Now, none of y'all demons, y'all holy, y'all righteous, you're going to heaven. <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir. Well, you're just playing this part right now. Now, watch this, saints. I, I, would, I would be in a place where I'm praying. But I still felt like there was a blanket over the house where I was praying. And then I would hear footsteps walking on the, on the floor. And it wasn't no children in there. And, 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 and watch. It didn't happen until it got dark outside. Let me say this. A spiritual husband can't be casted out of you. A spiritual wife, that's where you have dreams where someone is, you have sexual encounters with somebody. That can't be casted out of you. In the world, they call it wet dreams, they call it all type of stuff. I'm just going real raw right now because some of y'all need to hear this. You need to hear this. Dr. Phil don't need to be lying to you no more. <laughs> you don't need to be lying to you no more. You need to hear the truth. The Bible said you will know the truth, and then the truth will set you free. Now watch this. That, let me just say this. I didn't mean to go into this, but the Holy Spirit telling me to go there. If you have sex with the wrong person ever in your life, you can open up the doors to spiritual husbands. If you have a wrong, uh, wrong relationship of any kind that's toxic, you can open up doors to these spiritual husbands at the night. Now, that's not my subject, but God just wanted somebody to hear that. And so 
What began to happen was I would hear the demonic lurking while I was praying. And one night God told me, he said, son, there's about to be a war in here. I'm like, Jesus, well, come on now. Just, just let me get out of here then, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. And the Lord told me, he said, no, this is your assignment. See, you'll know if something is your assignment because you're trying to always run away from it. You always try to leave it. You always try to avoid it or not complete it or try to get away from what, what, what's happening right there. But God said, no, stay right there. This is your assignment. Now watch this, saints. As this began to happen in my life, I began to see spiritually what was happening in the house. And it scared me one night. It did scare me at first. God had to give me a boldness. He got to give me a boldness. Because evil spirits are very ugly. In the spirit realm, they look good when you see that woman or that man. Uh, now watch this say when I went into that place of seeing in the spirit God started showing me the spirits that was inside the house now what began to happen was the spirits had such a powerful dominance in the house that they would walk through the house Saints, in, in Genesis, it said that there were giants. <laughs> I thought Shaquille O'Neal was a giant, but I don't know. That, that, that was just my thought. But listen. But these giants was nine feet. What did the Bible say? The sons of God went into the daughters of men. Yes. Now, people don't understand this mystery. It wasn't that there was literal, oh my God. Mm. Oh my God. I need to hear this. I feel it Lord. It wasn't that there was a literal occurrence it, it, uh, of, 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 of. The demonic was so strong in that generation, which we, we, we in that generation also. That's why it's such an increase of this. That the spiritual husbands, they went inside of the woman, had sex with them spiritually, and produced. I want you to see this. Oh, my God. Can you stay with me in there? That's why the father said, I'm going to send my spirit. I'm going to come inside of the womb of Mary. I'm going to fix this, the, the, the spiritual husband issue. And spiritually, I'm going to produce my baby. To deliver man from all these different realms of the demonic ever functioning in their womb, their life, their spirit, their productivity, every single realm. Je that, that, that's why the virgin birth was so significant because what Jesus did was he took the same thing that the devil did in Genesis. Now watch this. It was after Adam's sin that the sons of God came down. See, sin opens up a door for demons to come down. And you say, why do demons come down? Because demons are in the second heaven. There are some demons in the second heaven but there are other demons that are reserved. The book of Jews said that they reserved for the day of judgment. God told me that dinosaurs will be released in tribulation. The Lord told me that in the river Euphrates is a location where dinosaurs are hidden underneath that bottom ocean. Also, God told me that uh, the Bermuda Triangle, they have dinosaurs underneath that realm also. The Bermuda Triangle is a demonic kingdom. Location. If you drive your plane by the Bermuda Triangle, it'll disappear. 
If you ever go to the Bermuda Triangle and you try to swim there, your boat will disappear. There have been planes disappearing and it's gonna keep happening. God told me it's gonna happen. I remember the Lord telling me, he said, son, there's a great calamity coming to San Francisco. I had a vision and I saw big old giant principalities over that land. The last meeting I had in San Diego, I got delayed in uh, San Francisco hours. It was so strange. I had the meeting to come the same day. And as I was, every time the plane was about to release, they said, uh-oh, something happened. And it would just keep on happening. And God told me the day before the meeting, he said, you're going to have to pray because against hindrances. And, and these demons, they move through entry. Meaning you got you to gotta sin against God so way. Now watch this. Demons, can't, they can't possess you without your decisions. Watch this. Every demon can talk to you. But they can't possess you without your decisions. So your decisions got to invite them. Or your decisions got to give them the right to come inside of you. Now since, watch this. While I was in the house, I started seeing all this different stuff. God started showing me evil spirits in the house. And things got physical. There's a realm in the spirit where it really start manifesting in the flesh. <clears throat> One day I was talking to the man and when I when I was talking to him, I was actually talking uh, to him and then my mother was there. And I, I, me and my mother were talking about Jesus or something like that. And he started running. And so the Lord told me, he said, son, this assignment is not for you to try to deliver this man. I said, really? He said, no, son, it's not for your deliverance. He said, this is for your teaching in the future. Ah. Now, I want to say something to you. A lot of people do not have wisdom in ministry. I know a lot of people that are possessed today is laying on their hands. And God does not tell you. Listen, deliverance ministry is not to be played with. If you ever go try to pray for anybody without yourself being at a rank with God, that demon would overthrow you. So what God began to do, I had to wait in a place of surrender. God started teaching me about spirits. And saints, the Lord told me, he said, he told me one day, he said, son, a lot of people think that demons are uh, invisible creatures. They think that demons are invisible. But he told me, he said, son, he said, demons move in the people world. And he said, son, so do my angels. I said, well, Lord, how do people deserve the way that you let me deserve? He said, let brotherly love continue. He said, let brotherly love continue. See, if you walk in love towards your brothers and sisters, you don't have to wait to know who people are. You already blame this. Whether they make it or not, whether they unrighteous or not, whether they sin or not, you are already doing what God wants you to do towards sin. So you, it, don't, it don't matter who you is. As long as you walk in love, that's what he told me. He said, let brotherly love continue. Now watch, y'all, y'all can, I don't want y'all to stand up there all the time. I'm sorry about that. And so, what began to happen was the Lord started showing me the spiritual world. 
and it, the, the, act, the activity only increased in the nighttime. Now the whole day went by and that house was all Christianized. <laughs> and it was a big house too. Ain't nothing was happening in the house. But when nighttime hit, all oh, this commotion started hitting. If you ever see a thief, a thief does not want to rob a store until it's nighttime. If they rob the store in the daytime, they feel it's really broke. And then if they needed some cheeseburgers or something that they was hungry that day. And something wasn't going right for them. And so when when I started seeing the spiritual realm, so one day I'm inside the house. And Lester, he comes to the room. And th these was his exact words to me. He said, I'm bringing my friends. They're from the Bronx. And he said, we are going to burn your body. And we're going to bury you in the back. Now, saints, as the Lord lives, after he told me that he was going to burn my body that was on his way, and he told me, he said, they're not far from here. They're actually almost around the corner. He told me they're almost around the corner. He said, we're going to burn your body. Now watch this saints. At the time I still had asthma. And so I found out my it was actually not me, it was my mother that saw the vision that he was I, I I started losing some of my boxes. And my boxes were going missing. I'm like, maybe I'm just tripping. But come to find out, he was burying my boxes in the backyard. Now, saints, this is a true story. There's, there's no exaggeration to this. It's, it's a true life story. You, you need to know the history of somebody that's anointed. You have to know the history of somebody that's a covering to your life. Why God authorizes them to cover you. You can't be a general in the spirit if you have a general walk like everybody else. True. Generals have different training. Somebody can go to the army to be a soldier. You're just a soldier. But I'm trying to be a no limit soldier. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> uh, And so, saints, what began to happen was, I didn't get nervous. I actually felt a strong anointing come upon me supernaturally. Amen. And all of a sudden, there was a boldness that came on me. And I didn't, I didn't say nothing to him. I didn't, I didn't, hello? I didn't say nothing to try to uh, stop him from doing what he said he was going to do. I just knew this means war. Now remember, God had told me that there was going to be war in this house. And so saints, I see a truck arriving. And saints, it's a true story. The truck arrives all these big old men come out of the truck. I'm talking about big. Like they was tall and muscular. They looked like they was giants themselves, but they wasn't. It was in the six feet. Around like six four. And it was about five of them jumped out. Like five of them boys. Five of them boys. Five of them boys. Five. Yeah, I wasn't never scared, what? I was never scared, what? 
And so, saints, what began to happen was when they jumped, when they jumped out the truck, I saw them. They had ropes. I felt like it was about to be a Nazi thing, of, you know. Uh, see ropes and all this stuff. I'm like Jesus, you said that. You said, Lord, Lord, Lord. And so, all of a sudden, hold on. And I was wondering what's going to go on. And Jesus told me, he said, son, you're about to see. He said, you'll never know who I am until Satan confronts you. You know what I said? Yes, sir. Mm. You'll never know who God is until Satan confronts you. Amen. So saints, what began to happen was I hear Lester opening up the door to these guys. And I hear them laughing and just clowning and masculine. It sounded like a stampede. Now, saints, as I was inside of the room, God told me, he said, son, don't leave the room. I'm just going to give you my instructions. Don't leave the room. Don't go out and talk about the blood of Jesus being against you. <laughs> don't talk about I come by you and they touch you. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't do no Spider-Man moves. <laughs> he told me, son, just don't leave the room. So, I hear Lester yell out from the balcony. And God, I, I had some worship music. God said, turn the worship music off. Turn everything off. I hear Lester say, they're here. See, demons like to clown. Every demon is a clown. He got no power. And look what clowns do. That's why we saw them clowns up there chasing people in their car. <laughs> My dear did a movie on the clowns. Oh, never mind. Y'all ain't watch that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now, watch this, saints. God told me, he said, son, don't leave, don't leave the room. Don't try to do nothing spiritual. Don't. He said, son, be still and know that I'm God. Amen. God, I don't want you to pray. I don't want you to ask me to help you. Just do what I say. Now, saints, as I'm sitting in my room, calm, cool, and steady, I shouldn't really be calm, cool, and steady. Because the atmosphere has proven that I'm about to get burned. The guys that came from the Bronx. And all of a sudden, they're here inside the house. Now, I began to, it seemed like my life was flashing before me because I, I, I really did start thinking, I'm going to die. I know, I know it, Jesus. You just don't want to tell me. <laughs> well, I see you when I see you when I come up there, but I know, I know it. You just don't want to tell me, Lord. But since long story short, I hear the man proceeding to my room. Mm -hmm. Now, when they came towards the room, The man knocked the door, and God told me not to answer. <laughs> so he started knocking the door to the degree he broke the door open. Now, watch this, saints. When he broke the door open, it was over, uh, it was the five men in Leicester coming in the room. Now, I didn't have no weapons, I didn't have no guns, no shape, no knives. 
No nothing. And boom! They break through the door. When they broke through the door, all I saw was demons. I didn't see the natural realm. Something happened. Their face turned into like this monster thing. And I saw the spirits. And what God spoke to me, he said, son, this is what my people run from. I just heard him in the back of my mind say this. But he said, watch. I'm going to show you who I am through this. And saints, the people had ropes. And I'm just showing you how God did with angelic ministry too. They had ropes in their hands and all this different stuff. And they had these little candle things. You remember they had a house full of candles. But these guys had some type of candle thing. And they're going to accomplish. Now, if you look at the scenario, the door them knocked over. They got access to me. It seemed like it's over. I didn't budge. I'm a little bit chill. Cause I'm like, if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die in peace. <laughs> God ain't gonna tell me, well, son, you was up there fearful. I'm like, okay, just cut my head off, but I'm gonna be calm when you cut my head off. <laughs> Amen. So, boom, when they break the door open, now watch, this is a big old God come launch himself at me. went go jump towards that man went flying to the other door as the Lord lives when he flew to the other door I see all the men start running back and watch listen this is his own watch this when when the when 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 that guy flew back all of them started running but watch they was not saying nothing they said, they coming for us. Yeah. Now, who is them? Jesus. <laughs> I'm not them. So he can't be talking about me. I'm not fighting. I'm not in a place of, of, of trying to fight back or do nothing in the natural. It's not me. He said, they are coming. Saints, they ran downstairs. They run outside the door. They get into the truck and they leave. Saints, when I get inside the downstairs area, because God told me, he said, son, I want you to walk around this house. He said, son, ain't, ain't nobody going to do nothing. Yeah. He said, the devil's just a big old joke. He come bark and bark, and he ain't got no teeth. Yeah. He said, son, I want you to walk downstairs. So I walk downstairs. God told me, he said, son, he said, for the rest of your life, I want you to bring people into this same realm of supernatural encounters. Now watch, this is just me. Ain't nobody know me. Well, the people that know me, they, you know. At the time, I'm just on the backside of the desert. God just teaching me. Because I need to be wise to release such realms of the person of Jesus to the earth. I need to experience these things. Now, say from that encounter, Lester, I get news that the men that came to kill me, all five of them were killed the same night by a drunken driver. All of them did it. The same night. Y'all, you know they had a funeral? You thought I went to a funeral? Huh? 
<laughs> Lester, he becomes very sick. To the degree his wife tells us that he dies. You think I went to the field? God then began to teach me. And he told me, he said, son, every time I plant my child in a place, demons will come to intimidate him. If you stand your ground, you don't get fearful, you don't get distracted, you stop looking at the attacks and look at what Jesus is doing through your life to raise you up and bring you to a place of the anointing. Nothing by any means shall hurt you. That's all that God was doing. He was just showing me a scenario that the evil spirits was going to be sent, but it wasn't going to prosper. Amen. Do you know why no weapon formed against you shall prosper? Because God created every weapon. Amen. So he know how to quench them. If you read the text, Isaiah 54, verse 15, 16, it says that God made the blacksmith. He made the weapon. It can't prosper because he made it. You ain't got to worry about nothing. See, see, worry is the penalty for ignorance. When you worry, that means that you're ignorant of your weapons. You're ignorant of what God has given you. You're ignorant of, of the ability of God in your life. What began to happen in my life from that point, I went to a different rank in the spirit. And God said, because you pass your test, I promote you. Every season that you're in is a test. And God is looking to promote you in every season. But here go that awkwardness. I was in an awkward place. I didn't want to be there. But God wanted me. God was trying me before I had ever received the international ministry, before God had given me any type of great grace or great anointing. He was seeing if I could master the secret things of warfare, of being in a place I didn't want to be, of experiencing things I didn't want to experience, and keep my obedience to him. It was those moments where God began to pour oil on my life in awkwardness, in discomfort. Give me a little string this morning. He began to pour his oil on me through those realms where I was experiencing these great demonic threats to my life. A lot of people miss. Jesus said that he gave us power to tread upon the surface of the scorpions. And all the powers. It's witchcraft power, lust power, uh, fearful power, mental powers, depression powers, lack powers, poverty powers, uh, stronghold addiction powers. He gave you the power to trample over all the powers of the enemy. You just got to stay the course where you are. Finish strong, don't finish wrong. Don't miss the lesson in your process. It's beautiful. Now, if I, if I was in a place where I was complaining, could have died in that situation. But what the Lord did was he gave me a supernatural patience. From that point in my life, I had that experience with near death. 
I knew that ain't nothing could stop me. Amen. You know, I can prophesy to some of y'all because I'm seeing so much right now. But God, even with the prophetic anointing, he'd be telling me, just wait, wait, wait. What's so powerful, saints, is that from that place in my life, Jesus became more real to me than every single thing that I saw, every single thing that I experienced. I began to see Jesus in my life. From that moment, Lord took me to another place in my ministry, but I had to overcome that. Every single thing that comes into your life that you don't like, God said, if you overcome this, I can release you into what you want. I can give you what you desire, but you're going to have to pass this test. Saints, you don't want to keep doing the same test over and over again. I learned the excellent spirit. Everybody stand to your Pray in the Spirit, saints. Come on, saints. Pull on the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Spirit, saints. There's something that God wants to raise you up to do in this generation. You don't want to miss it. We living in the last days. We living in the last hours. Saints, it's not really all what we have made. It's really all about Jesus in this hour. Oh my God. Oh my God. And saints, Jesus trying to get your attention back on him. He oh my God. He trying to get your attention back on him. It's not about all the stuff that we made it, saints. It's just about Jesus. It's really Jesus, the Son of God, calling you again. It's really him crying out to get your attention. It's not so much all the different stuff that he's going to bring to you. He's going to bring you the stuff, but saints, he's saying, I want to bring myself first. I want to bring myself first. I want to give you me. I want you to know me first. The saints, there's deliverance in Jesus. There's freedom in Jesus. There's power in Jesus. There's blessing in Jesus. There's liberty in Jesus. There's life in Jesus. There's grace in Jesus. There's wisdom. There's everything you need in Jesus. Saints, that's what God is doing. He's bringing you back into that place, woman of God. Oh, la bako sala bako reke say. The stuff coming to your life to take your focus off of Jesus. So you won't look at him. So you won't think about him. So that you won't spend time with him. So you won't praise him. So that you won't fall in love with him. But saints, the Holy Spirit is giving you back your zeal. He's giving you back your focus. 
He's giving you back your mind. He's giving you back your future. He's giving you back your restoration. He's restoring your soul. He's giving you back your zeal for God. He's giving you back your prayer life. He's giving you back every single thing that you've been looking for. God is calling you today. Jesus is giving you back the invitation. He's giving you back the anointing. He's giving you back the place of grace. He's giving you back the place of power. He's giving you back the place of glory. He's giving you back the place of your crown. He's giving you back the place of your position. He's giving you back the place of where you reign with him in this life. You'll do the things he wants you to do. You'll say the things he wants you to say. You'll be the person that he wants you to be. You'll go to places he wants you to go. Jesus, the Son of God, is calling you. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Saints, of you in this room, shout Jesus. Saints, that's all God wanted. He wanted a church that would call upon his name. He wanted a church that would surrender to his name. He wanted a church that would love every single thing that he tells them to do. Saints, Jesus is giving you back the love that you wanted for him. He's giving you back the love that you desired for him. He's giving you back the love what you dreamed that you were coming to for him. This is the time for you to take a hold of Jesus in your life. Don't be stagnant. Don't delay. Don't procrastinate. This is the time for you to put on your creator. This is the time for you to put on the God that created you from the foundation of the world. That breathed his life into you. He loves you so much that he died on the cross for you. He loves you so much that he laid down his life for you. He loves you so much that he saved you from the car accident. He saved you from the bad marriage. He saved you from the death you had. He saved you from the sickness in your body. This is the time for you to take a hold of Jesus in every single realm of your life. Don't wait any longer. Let God take you over. Don't wait any longer. Let Jesus have his way with you. It's time for him to possess you. It's time for him to hide in your body. It's time for him to fill you with spirit. It's time for him to fill you with power. You've been given a supernatural grace in this life. For you to carry this gospel to every single creature. For you to carry the word to every single lost soul. This is your assignment in this life. And he raising you up. He giving you a chance to show forth his glory in every single nation, in every single group, in every single uh, culture, in every single place in this world. This is the time for you to take your rightful place. Dear woman of God, dear man of God, begin to gird up the loins of your mind. Begin to gird up your focus. Begin to gird up your soul and begin to protect your heart and begin to let Jesus come inside and do what he want with you. Let him call the shots in your life. Let him tell you what to do. Let him tell you his instruction. But this is your time. Stay with, with God. When God anoints you, It's because you let him bring you into this place. It's because you let him bring you into this place. It's because he let you. Oh.
been with him. And the Lord said to tell you, he said, tell my daughter Shamel that I'm restoring back her health, I'm restoring back her, restoring back her wealth. The Lord telling me that he's about to bridge your special, favorable opportunity. God telling me that he's bringing you back into restoration for your life. The Lord said the things that you suffered, which they didn't understand. And the things that you suffered with, with, with people that didn't understand you, he said, you my prophet is. And I brought you here. And, and God said to re-anoint you. To re-anoint you in the place of prophetess. God said, I obey you this day afresh. As my Lord, our God, and prophetess, I'll use you to the nations. I'll restore your life. I'll bless you with sweet marriage. And I'll grant the desires of your heart. Save the spirit of the living God.
Regina in here today? Regina. Regina present? Regina. Listen.
The Lord Jesus spoke to me at 12 noon today. And the Lord Jesus told me, he said, son, tell my people. me today with a seed for financial deliverance and for prophetic grace. Now saints, the Holy Ghost told me once again, he said, son, let them hear me on the amount in this. The Lord said, sow a seed in the, in, into this precious glory of God. Saints, I want you to pray in the Spirit for the next 20 seconds. Just pray in the Spirit. Ask the Holy Ghost. If some of you all are going to be sowing a seed tonight. Because the glory of God is so thick tonight. This seed is going to come back into your life before May comes in. Because the glory of God is so strong tonight.
says, as you saw in your seed, I'm going to pray a prayer with you. Everybody lift your hands to heaven. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I receive supernatural wisdom in my decisions, in my behavior, in what I allow in my life. I receive your wisdom and understanding to be accurate in everything you want me to do. I receive your wisdom in the realm of my provision. I receive wisdom in the realm of my relationships. I receive your wisdom in the realm of my future. Right now, Father, I receive the Holy Spirit possessing me, filling me. Use me, Jesus. Take me over, Lord. Possess my life again. Fill me with your presence. Fill me with your word. Fill me with your righteousness and help me to obey you every single time. In the name of Jesus, I release blessings upon you as you give. Saints, give your best seed in Jesus' mighty name. Be lifted. If you sow it, you may sow your seed on the Bible. Be lifted higher. Jesus, be lifted higher. I loose Arrhenius, I loose Darion, 
I loose Uriel to minister to the people of God. May your angels go forth in the mighty name of Jesus. May every single thing that belongs to them, may it come to them in the name of Jesus. I pray upon their life that the blessing would overtake them, that favor would surround them, that glory would come upon them, that they will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Lord, that you may grant sweet marriages in their life, that you would restore the joy of their salvation, that you would grant them prophetic grace and financial deliverance this day. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray it's done. We're going to do something. We're going to do something before we close. We're going to do something before we close. Now watch this thing. Before we close, listen, you can't be looking at people. Listen. Listen, you can't be looking at people. Saints, I know for my life that Jesus has done too much for me. For me to be reserved. Listen, you can't do it. You can't do it, saints. As a matter of fact, when I was ministering to you, that teaching got intoxicated. So sometimes I'm here, but I'm in the fourth heaven. Now I'm going to do a book on the fourth heaven. But I'm going to give you scripture reference so that you can understand what I'm talking about. When you prophesy God, he don't have you in the earth realm. He takes you to a special place. Spiritually, Ezekiel was taken up to another realm. Now watch this, saints. I feel the anointing. Now watch, saints. I'm doing this as Prophet Joshua did in the text in the Bible. I think that's the sixth book in the Bible. When Joshua was told by the Lord, and we're about to close. When Joshua was told by the Lord to get around the mountain seven times and dance. Saints, we're going to do something. And the Holy Spirit of the living God told me to do it. He said, son, when they do it, I'm going to assign a special angel to the life. He said, son, it's not by might nor by power. It's by my spirit. But he said, son, the blessing is in the obedience. He said, it don't have to be that I do it this way. But he said, son, just like Gideon, I'm yeah. looking for somebody to do it. say, we're going to do something. And, and I'm going to count to three. When I count to three, I want you to stand up and shout Jesus. Now, saints, I want you to prepare yourself. Your life is not going to be the same. These meetings, God told me, he said, son, when you hold any meeting, I'm impregnating the atmosphere with my presence. He said, everybody will go back with a portion. He said, some will go with residue, some will go with a fullness. But he said, it depends on how they engage me in the atmosphere.
You obey the prophet. You obey the prophet. You obey the prophet. God just wanted to see that you pass the test. Saints, everything that the Lord has for you, what you see in your eyes. Tiffany, God said, Tiffany, when I get your house, God's gonna bless you. He remember you. Oh my God, 
God, saints. Listen, I don't know if some of y'all know. See, you don't understand. Jesus made you dangerous in the spirit tonight. Listen, in the mighty name of Jesus, as a prophet of the Lord Jesus, I cancel every spirit of retaliation against your life. No devil will touch you. No spirit will. Oh, no spirit will touch you. Make sure 